It's Learn Explore, I think. And it yes. has Learn and Explore. You click on Learn and Explore, and that has all the whaling trips and the canyoneer walks. And um, we give you a brochure. No, I don't think they have a brochure. They have some of the tables. It's not a brochure, is it? It gives the the length. The length. Key to the height. It has the length. Okay. So. In fact, you want to go get it. No, I'm good. Anyway. I'm trying to figure it out. So the link's pretty. Most of the links, I mean, most of the high, all the hikes right now, you have to RSVP because they're trying to have a 25 member of 25 people per. Uh, I'm out here every day. I've been keeping that trail trimmed. Good for you. <laughs> I can tell you're a weathered. You're <laughs> Where Season. are you? Did you bring Season, yeah. <laughs> we used to hike with someone that had clippers with him. You know, remember him? We uh, every once in a while. Does have clippers? This has the link. This has the link. And if it gets bad enough, is... I bring it with a saw. Anybody else want it? One of these? I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna get off the beat path right now. <laughs> to start out with the big picture for um, for our hikes. And what I'm 
the area that we're in has a lot of trees and, and, and we have a river running through. It's more, it's, this is what we describe as a riparian area. And if you had an aerial view of San Diego, you would see that most of the most of the canyons have big trees in them. And every time you see these big trees, you know there must be water running. It's a waterway because that's the only way trees get enough water here. Um, so we have big, there for the native plants here we have only a few trees to learn and we have willow trees which are the ones with really skinny leaves here and we have cottonwood trees which are the ones with the bigger triangular leaves these these here oh. these cottonwood mm -hmm. and you can tell the difference in, in, of the bark. The cottonwood trees have kind of a vertical striations in their leaves. See, here's one here. And then the willow trees are not um, a little different colored bark, and it's not quite as vertical striations. If you want to see, if you can't see the leaves up above, I always tell people, look on the ground and see what what's on the ground and then you can see to identify the leaves up there if, you, if they're too high to see um, so those are two of the trees that are that you'll see in every canyon in san diego mm -hmm. so, there's these flowers here too and this is a flower here if you notice mike he said it was a primrose it's it a, is oh, evening it's primrose Hooker's Primrose. Hooker? Hooker, and that's a person, not... Yeah. <laughs> not, the other kind not the of. other person. Not, the other kind. not an occupation. And this is one flower that blooms in the fall. Oh. One of the ones. Cool. You notice that it's a plum. Shoot. Sunflower? Sunflower. 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 Like this Aranda over here, or this uh, pompous grab, are very invasive. Once they get loose, they have such a heavy root system and invasive root system, it's almost impossible to get rid of. Collect these and store them, then you can go and, and then use your stored reserves of these things. Uh, the only thing about the acorns, the, the acorn itself has uh, tannin in it, uh, which is a very bitter and uh, difficult to, uh, to digest, doesn't taste very good. So what the Indians had to do was to collect these, grind these down, and then soak the uh, the uh, acorn mash in in water, or they have they would have special uh, weed baskets where they would pour it in and pour water through, and then it would drain out kind of pinkish as the tannin uh, washed out. When it ran clear, then they could prepare it for cooking. And the modern Indians do the same thing. You can instead of you collect them. But instead of having to grind them down, they can put them actually in a coffee grinder and grind them down that way, put them in a pillowcase, the, the mash, and then put it in the sink and run water through it until it runs out clear, and then they can prepare it. And the way they had cooked these in, in ancient days, they didn't use pottery for cooking. They actually used baskets because when you, when you have a basket and you add water, it, it, it kind of uh, expands and becomes watertight. So they would cook their foods and mushes in baskets and they would use heating rocks because they couldn't put a basket over a fire and you'd have these nice smooth rocks that you could drop in and stir with water and your mush or whatever you were cooking and then you could control the temperature by the rock and, um, and then you could change the rock and put more rocks in. Um, the way it cooked was inside out because the rock is in the center and the modern Indian uh, does, uh, you know, can't if he 
cook it on a stove top, it's going to give a different flavor because that cooks outside in. So they tend to use a microwave because the microwave then will cook inside out to kind of replicate the taste of, of the, um, the acorns that were done by their ancestors that they collected them. And if you happen to be curious, you can buy commercial acorn flour. Yeah. And you can make bread with it. It's quite a bit more expensive than regular flour because of the process that you have to use to, to, to process it. It's also an acquired taste. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the porridge they used to make, they call shawi. And they use that as a staple. It's sort of like in Hawaii where people made poi out of taro root. That was like the base for almost everything. Yeah. All kinds of soups, stews. They made bread with it. They would, they would do it almost like polenta where you could cut it into little blocks and take it with you if you were going out hunting or something. They would drop different types of meats in it, berries. So it was your all around base for anything you wanted to eat. Yeah, so you know, in breakfast you could just put berries and different things you collected at dinner. You know, if you caught it, uh, a, a rodent or a rabbit or something, you chop <laughs> it up and skin it, chop it up and throw it in there and cook it in there and it becomes the base for like a stew. Yeah. So. As we walk along here, we're going to see a lot of different types of uh, willow trees. Now this willow tree here, I want to say it's either a red willow or a black willow. What's unique about the willow tree is that the bark of the willow tree is one of the primary constituents, methyl salicylate, which is common aspirin, right? So Native Americans used it for medicinal purposes, plus they used the, the willows to make uh, baskets. They even used, the, the women used the, the willow, they would beat the bark and everything and make skirts. They would make kneeling pads when they were working. They had pads for their knees and pads for their rumps when they were sitting down processing their, all their food and stuff. So they were very practical. They took things around them and made what they needed to get by. Yeah, one other thing, this is the most important plant for making baskets. And for storing the acorns, this is also that aspirin type of chemical that is in here also uh, tends to uh, ward off a lot of insects so they would make their granary baskets for the acorns that they collected they would uh, have these baskets off the ground and then have these huge baskets where they would drop the acorns in for storage and the chemical that is in here tended to ward off the insects that would try to eat the acorns. It's it is. Oh, it is. Oh, I've, I've trimmed oh, the bush in my the back on the hill. Yeah. The I get rashes oh, all yeah. over from this. Well, there's one thing I wanted to point out. Um, I'm rusty, I'm sorry. Um, is that most of the leaves on the and the shrubs here are very, okay, Every plant here has to survive drought conditions, mm -hmm. okay? And we get maybe nine inches of rain at the most a year. That's a lot. That's a lot when you get that. So, so they have to be very hardy. And so they have, all the plants have adapted to this climate. And that's how they survive here. So you notice that they are... They feel the leaves, they're, these are evergreen, so the leaves are really waxy, and they're really thick. So this waxiness helps them maintain and keep the moisture. Um, also, this is curved so that if it gets any moisture on it, it will drop right down and stay in the area of the tree. Uh, so that's, I always, so if you just notice, most of these trees that are, ever, are evergreen, except for the, say the um, cottonwood tree here. Oh, <laughs> this is the San Diego River, and it, it originates, does anybody know where it starts? Julian? You're Julian? I do. Did you go <laughs> Near Julian. Um, and it's flowing. It's flowing. It goes. These guys here. are from the East Coast. They know what a real river is. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a creek, right? Okay. Well, the River is. But, but yeah. when it rains, it's a river. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this goes from here all the way through Mission Valley okay. and out into the ocean. It goes to Mission Gorge. Yeah, Mission Valley too. Through Mission Gorge, yeah. Mission, Mission Valley. Valley. Yeah, cut. Um, Mission Valley. Yeah. So, uh, further up, 
It used to be the the um, the Padres for the Father Junipero Serra built his mission here and got the Indians to build a dam to control the river so, so they could have water at the mission and to keep it from flooding, I guess. But uh, so that exists at Mission Gorge, uh, I mean Mission Trails Park. Um, so we have here are some different plants that are not riparian, but are these are reeds. These are pussy willows. Here, cattails. Not pussy willows. What cattails. Cat, cat, cattails. I know. I got the the right. I got pussy the feline. willows. That, yeah. I got the, <laughs> a I willow. Got the feline in there. <laughs> is, is this, so the cattails. Is this a native? Or is it, a, is it in baseball? No, it's an angel. Is it? Yeah. Those little hot dog things. Yeah. Now, now, if you happen to pick one and take it home, you're in for a surprise because the seeds mature, that's the seeds, and, and explodes, and all this, <laughs> this cottony stuff comes blowing out. So, um, yeah. That sounds like the voice of experience. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I got into this dried flower. Oh, you wanted a nice so dried flower I arrangement. Back, I lived back east, and so I was picking all these thistles and the, the cattails to put them in a, you know. A <laughs> so here we have a... This is this is the um, other plant. <laughs> You're not holding it right. You're not holding. Yeah, come on. Holding it over. Your head. <laughs> this, is, this is another plant that has male flowers and female flowers on it. So usually, when the flowers come, the male flowers are kind of a yellowish. Hmm. because they have pollen and then the female is whitish and they, it turns to fluff. Male and female plants. Yeah. Oh that's right, it's male and female plants. One plant has the one male and female the male flower. flower, one plant has the female flowers on it. Can you tell the difference? Yeah, the, the it, flowers are blooming, different. Yes. And oh, and they're blooming? Yes. Yeah, they, <laughs> is it they, um, We're kind of past that point right now. Yeah. When do they bloom? April? Uh, then it get budding right now. Looks yeah, like there are, there are some buds there. If you came down here in another couple weeks, maybe even a week, you'd probably see some blooming. And then you can identify whether it's male or female. I was looking at these flowers. <laughs> Hooker's eating primrose, or just primrose if you don't like it. But Hooker was the guy's name. <laughs> I was up on West Mesa earlier this year. And the Ceanothus kind of overgrows the trail, so you're like going through a tunnel on the side of the mountain. Of course, there were flowers in there, so I have my camera and I'm taking a picture of a flower like this. And I looked over, and this skunk stepped out of the bushes right there. <laughs> and I go, "Okay." I go like this. I go. I told my friend, I hollered, "Skunk!" And, but it was like the skunk saw me and went that way. I told the skunk, and I went this way. <laughs> Didn't bother you. No, it was nice. It was nice there. You can't see, you can't see skunks in the middle of the day because they pretty much forage whenever they feel like. If you had to have vitamin C, that's a good thing to do. Rose hips. Source of vitamin C. Growing in a wild rose.